Are you a mid to high handicap golfer that's considered getting yourself a set of game improvement clubs to help make the game of golf not only more fun, but just more enjoyable overall? If so, I may have just a set for you with a Cleveland Launcher XL Halo Irons. I'm gonna do a full review on these for you and that's coming at you right now. All right, thanks again for watching and welcome back. My name is Roland here at Garage Golf, and here at Garage Golf, we provide information on golf products, golf equipment, golf technology, golf simulators, and pretty much anything golf related. So if you're new to our channel, make sure to subscribe, click that bell notification for more videos like the one you're watching here today. Of course, if you have questions anytime, reach out to me, Roland at mygaragegolf.com. My main purpose here is to help people like yourself that are looking to get into the golf simulator world, create a golf simulator of your own. So we walk people through it from step one all the way to the finish. We do that basically for your unique needs, your unique space, and uh, it's at no additional cost to you. So if you're looking to do this yourself, reach out to me, send me an email. Happy to talk to you, walk you through this entire process. It does help out our channel if you use some of our links, which is really beneficial to us, but most importantly, at no additional cost to you. So that's really important to me, and that's why we started this channel here at Garage Golf. Of course, lastly, if you want to check out our website, make sure to do that at www.mygaragegolf.com. Put a lot of really cool stuff on there. All of our video reviews are on there. Some of the products that we recommend. We also have written reviews on everything that we've tested here in the simulator as well. Make sure to check out our website. All right, so jumping right into the video, let's go ahead and get straight into these clubs. I wanna give you a little bit closer view of what we're dealing with here today. So we got, again, the Cleveland XL Launcher Halo Irons. I have them in a five, a seven, and a pitching wedge. As you can see, obviously, there's some width to these things. They're big, they're hollow and they know it basically. So they're basically touting these clubs to people that want to enjoy the game of golf a little bit more. It's not all about looks. And again, either you're going to love these the way they look at a dress or you're going to hate them, I feel. Um, just because, again, very similar to mini hybrids as you go up the set from the five iron, this is the most that looks more like a hybrid as far as the way it looks at a dress. All the way up to a pitching wedge, which looks a lot more like a real club, a real iron, just a little bit more forgiveness to it. I'm gonna show you a quick video up close. I'll give you a little bit of the technology that's packed into these things, and then we'll start hitting some shots. We're gonna test these side by side with my current gamers, which are the PXG Gen 5 0311 series. I'm gonna give you data on both. I'm gonna see what we're looking at with numbers, shot dispersions, everything. Looking forward to bringing that to you. All right, so now we're gonna show you these clubs up close so you can get a better idea of what they look like. And here's some of the technology that's packed into these things. We obviously have an extra large head design that's gonna make these clubs more forgiving for you. It has a rail to V-shaped sole design, which is a glide rail and the long irons and then slowly transitions down into a V-shape and the shorter irons as well. We have what we call the mainframe, which is designed using artificial intelligence. The mainframe variable face technology increases ball speed while unique weight pads also ensures maximum forgiveness across the face of these clubs as well. So lots of technology that are packed into these things. We have an action mass center balance. So there's an eight gram weight that's placed inside the end of the grip that helps develop better balance for more control without extra effort. So that's gonna be a counterbalance feel. Really, really cool concept there as well. We have a high bore crown step, which is a step crown which drops the center of gravity for higher launching shots. And then we have loft specific grooves. So grooves are different depending upon which club you're hitting as well. All right, so again, really, really cool clubs, very unique. Um, I am a mid handicap golfer that are testing these golf clubs out. I'm about an 18 handicap. So again, I think these are perfect for someone like me who's possibly on the fence considering something maximum improvement or something that's just a game improvement iron. So I would put these in the maximum improvement or high improvement basically category, but let's see how they do. And again, I'm comparing these to my PXGs, a lot thinner clubs. Um, this graph, as far as the grams on the shaft on this one, is a 90 degree stiff. I'm used to swinging more of an 80. I did not get custom fitted for these, something to keep in mind. They are a little bit heavier, and with a larger head, I'm gonna see how that works out, but we'll check that, that CB, which is the counterbalance with the eight gram weight right below the grip. So we'll see if that helps with some of the weight difference that we have between the two shafts as well. Let's get started. We're gonna start with the pitching wedge. I've already hit all of my shots before with the PXGs. So I'll show you a little bit of that footage now as I'm talking, of course, and we've already created all the numbers for that. We're taking five solid shots with each club. I'm gonna pull out any duffs, massive chunks, anything like that, just to be fair to the clubs. If it's a good strike, I'm going to include it, and we're going to then compare numbers side by side in the end, as well as shot dispersion, to see if we're getting further distance 
or if we're just basically spraying that ball all across the fairway, of course, or maybe not even on the fairway. So the other thing is to keep in mind is the lofts are gonna be different between, uh, I know for the five and the seven, we're looking at about a three degree difference in loft. So from the five, I believe, on the PXGs, it's a 20 degree loft versus the five on the Cleveland's is gonna be a 23. Um, so there's gonna be a little difference with loft as well. We gotta keep that in mind when we're looking at distance and other things. But let's go ahead and get started. I'll walk you through it, give you my feedback as we go, and we'll finish it up from there. I'll come back and show you all the data at the end. So for those of you who are new to garage golf and watching this video for the first time, uh, we always dim our lights in here when we're hitting shots, just so you can see the ball flight behind me. We're using Unicore IXO technology. It's mounted here on the ceiling, along with GS Pro to kind of give us our data. Plus I have the view software that's integrated with the Unicore. And that's what I'm gonna go with as far as the numbers at the end to go over each shot. So I'll probably show you on camera about three shots per club, give you some feedback and let you know our thoughts. And then in the end, I go over the averages for you for both the PXGs and the Cleveland XL launcher. So I'm gonna compare them side by side, distance, ball spin, everything that we're getting, as well as shot dispersions to give you an idea on which club is performing better for me as a mid-handicap golfer. And hopefully you like this approach at home. If you're a mid to high handicap golfer, there's not a lot of videos out there that do stuff like this. So hopefully you enjoy these kind of videos, but let me know your thoughts. So we'll hit some shots. Now, again, I will take out, because I am a mid handicap golfer, I'm not gonna hit every shot clean. Sometimes I'll duff a ball, I'll chunk it. I've hit that curtain over there a couple times before in here. So definitely dummy proofed it for myself. Uh, but I'm gonna make this a very, very comparable video by making sure we only include solid contact shots. If it's a slight miss hit that I hit it on the, on the heel or something, I'll still include those, but I just take out major duffs or chunks. So let's get started. I'll walk you through it. We'll show you those shots. And uh, in the end, we'll go over the numbers with you and tally up everything from there to give you a better idea on how these clubs perform. Okay, good feel on that shot. I got it set about 115, carried that 115. Total distance, 122.8. This is the pitching wedge, obviously, that we're starting with. Um, super forgiving. It felt great. I didn't feel the ball at all, which could be good or bad, I guess, depending upon where you hit it. But I think if you hit that ball in the sweet spot, no matter what club you're using, you're not going to feel it. That's a great feeling versus feeling pain when you hit a shot. So let's go ahead and hit another one and see how we do. First one I was really impressed with. Okay. So just to show you guys at home, that was a duff. I will take that one out just for the purpose of videos. Major difference, right? I uh, hit the ground about an inch behind the ball. So that kind of stuff, I'm not gonna show you guys. I just wanted to show you on video what I take out, what I leave. If I were to hit that then and it still goes relatively same distance, I will include it. Okay. Slight miss hit on that one too. Only carried that one 102.8. Let's hit a couple more. You definitely still get penalized if you miss hit it. Nice strong feel there. A little bit of a fade. But right around that flag stick. 108, 113 total carry. Great feel to the club. The shaft is a little bit heavier than what I'm used to at 90 grams. Uh, and I think that's throughout the set, I believe. The counterbalance helps a bit to making it feel a little bit lighter. That's a unique feeling for me. So something I'm still getting used to, but it's a nice feeling. I like that. And uh, overall, when you make contact with it, it feels really good. Now this was the one that's most like a true iron. So as we work our way up to the seven, we'll see how we do with that one. Let's take one last shot here. That's pretty dialed in there. Woo, let's make it, let's make it. Okay, so of course, if I'm an 18 handicap, I will take that all day long from about 115 to 120. Overall, pitching wedge feels great. Let's move down to the seven iron, take some shots with that one, and then we'll finish up with the five iron from there. All right, so really strong start so far with the pitching wedge. Now we're gonna move down to the seven iron. Uh, traditional length pretty much for the most part, and it is variable length, of course, as you go throughout the set. Um, I just got to see, it's a pretty massive head here on a seven iron. So it kind of feels like a mini hybrid. Let's see how we do with it. I want to see, you know, I have my distance at about 160. I tend to average carry somewhere between 150 to 155 on a solid shot. 
with my current gamer. So let's see how we do with these and we'll get them tested out here. Good strike there. Overall great feel again. And again, right by the flag stick. So I would definitely take that. Let's keep hitting some shots to see how we do. All right, so it's been about three or four shots in between the one you just saw. Um, I am struggling a few, a little bit with some duffs on the shot just because I'm getting used to the weight of the head on the club. Um, other than that, the seven iron is the one, only one so far that I've kind of felt that a little bit. And I think it's gonna be an adjustment period, even for someone who's used to more of a max improvement club. Um, the weight, the total head size, I think it's, it's gonna obviously take a little adjustment period. And this is me really trying these out, you know, for the first time. So let's try again, let's see if we can show you on camera um, if I have any struggles here. Well, let's go ahead and hit a shot. Does look kind of like, a, obviously again, a mini hybrid at a dress. Good shot there for the most part. Little left, good distance though, again, Landing about pin high, 18 yards away, not my best, but I did carry that one 160. So I did see a kind of a difference in my carry distance on that shot. Let's go ahead and finish this up and hit one more shot for you guys on camera. And then we'll move down to the five iron. Strong shot there. Really, really good feel to it. Again, wow, I would definitely take that 152 carry. 163 total distance, ended up about five yards away from the hole. So really, really happy with those numbers. Let's move down to the five iron. Now, seven iron I did struggle with a few shots. It took me a little bit to get used to it. Uh, a couple shots I didn't, obviously won't include because they were duffs or major chunks. Uh, but when I'm making solid contact with them, it's going and it's going where I want it to go most importantly. Okay, good strike there. Good feel, good strike. Gonna land right on the front of the green. I'm gonna end up in that circle, which I would definitely take. Only a 169 carry on that one. Probably not my best strike, but again, I will include that one for video purposes because it wasn't horrible. Let's see if we can get a couple more shots in there. All right, so one thing I've been testing here is I wanna see if I can hit a draw shot. So let's see if I can hit a draw with this five as a mid handicap golfer, line it up for a draw and see if I can hit a good solid draw here. There's a bit of a draw there. Got the draw in, didn't land on the green. You can draw it with the right form and with the right skill, which I don't have either of, either of those right now. But as you can see, you can definitely draw the ball. You can shape it with this club if you need to. Just need to work on my form a bit to get where I wanna be. All right, so it's number time. Let's go ahead and check the numbers. Now you will see the numbers here on the screen. I will be looking right above you on my screen so I can walk you through these step by step. First thing, we're gonna compare our pitching wedge side by side between the Cleveland Launcher XLs and then also my current gamers, which are the PXG Gen 5s that I got custom fitted for. So let's go ahead and take a look at the numbers and you'll see them on your screen again. 115.7 total carry with the Cleveland XLs and the PXG 109.7. 119.6 total distance versus 115.1. Now the pitching wedge on both are at 44 degree specs. So got to keep that in mind. These are identical specs. So that's, that's really, really important. Um, side spin 0, 0.0 versus 3.4. These are the average of say five solid shots altogether. 92.4 uh, total ball speed with the Cleveland's and 87.2 total ball speed with the PXG. So definitely getting some more ball speed out of that technology that we're talked about. 74.97 backspin versus 63.19 backspin with the PXG. So again, a lot more backspin with the Cleveland's with the pitching wedge as well. Uh, 30.1 versus 26.7 launch angle. So that ball's getting up higher with the Cleveland. Uh, 51.8 versus 45.7 descent angle. So also higher there. And the apex at 94.5 versus 72.2. So identical lofts, we're looking at what? We're talking 22 degrees are 22 further apex than with the PXG, which I got custom fit for, and a 5.6 versus a 5.0 flight time. So ball's getting up, it's staying up longer, it's spinning more with the pitching wedge, which is what we want. Uh, so, so far, so good for the Cleveland XLs. Let's check the shot dispersion circles now, and we'll go over those with you as well. All right, so on your screen, you're now gonna see the shot dispersion. Please bear with me, I am colorblind. I have a tough time telling the difference between colors. So the lighter color, I'm gonna call that yellow. The darker color, 
I really have no idea. We'll just call it a darker color, all right? So the lighter color is my PXG. So you see a dispersion circle there. Nice tight dispersion circle overall, but you'll obviously see that the Cleveland's were not only tighter, but right on that center line a little bit more, which is why I got that 0.0. .0. And again, I hit some right, I hit some left, but I also hit three that were almost right on that line. So this round I have to give to the Cleveland XLs in regards to not only the numbers that I'm seeing, but also my shot dispersion circles as well with those. So really hit just almost five solid shots with, the, with these clubs, to be honest with you, really not a lot in between uh, duffs or, or different things. The actual pitching wedge was super, super easy to hit. Let's move on to the seven iron. We'll go over those numbers for you next. All right, so now we're gonna move on to the seven iron shots. And again, you're gonna see the Cleveland's on the top and my PXG's on the bottom, all right? 153.7 total carry versus 156.2. So a little bit further with the PXGs. And again, this, out of all the clubs I hit, seven iron I probably struggle with the most just to kind of get the feel for them. 164.8 versus 166.2 with the PXGs. Uh, 6.5 side versus 2.7. Uh, 106.7 versus 107.9 ball speed. A little bit faster ball speed with the PXGs as well. I do want to note that the PXGs have a three degree stronger loft with the seven iron than the Cleveland. So some of that will factor in, of course, with distance, with the set angle, with some of that stuff as well. But I gotta compare these as close as I can in, re in regards to the different lofts and what I'm looking at. Total backspin 4158 with the Cleveland's versus 4194 with the PXGs. Uh, the scent angle 45.7 versus 45.9, almost identical there. 92.5 versus 93.1 apex with, with a higher apex going to the PXGs and 5.8 versus 5.9 between the Cleveland and the PXGs for flight time. Again, three degrees stronger loft with PXGs. That's gonna be the case for the five iron as well. Um, I think it's a 20 degree loft with PXG, 23 with the Cleveland. So we'll look at those numbers next. But let me show you the shot dispersion circle for the seven iron. All right, so now you're gonna see the shot dispersion circle. And again, colorblind here, we're gonna call the Cleveland's blue. And I believe I will call the PXGs orange. I believe those are the right colors, but if not, let me know in the comments. Um, so again, the Cleveland's, I have a decent dispersion circle there, but I have a little bit better dispersion circle, um, a little bit further distance and a little bit more, I would say towards the center line with the PXGs. So in this round, just because I did struggle with the seven iron with the Cleveland's, I'm gonna give a slight nod to the PXGs. Um, again, that's probably when you test out most clubs at a store, you test out a seven iron. So this one just took me a little bit to get used to, uh, but I think if you were to give it some time, you would probably dial that in a bit as well. I'm curious to see the five iron numbers because I really, really hit the five iron well with the Cleveland's. So let's go ahead and move on to that one. We'll take a look at those numbers next. All right, so we're wrapping this up with the five iron now. You're gonna see the numbers again on the screen here. Cleveland XL, five iron total carry 178.1 versus 177.7. Again, remember the PXGs are three degrees stronger loft on this club as well. 193.2 versus 192.9 with the PXGs uh, for total distance. 0 0.4 left with the Cleveland, 3.6 left on average with the PXGs. Uh, ball speed, 116.7 versus 117.1 with the PXGs. Uh, we're looking at total backspin, 33.83 versus 33.91. Almost identical there, again, with a three degree higher loft on the Cleveland's. So um, let's look at the launch angle, 18.8 versus 16.4. That's where you see the difference in the launch uh, in regards to the loft angle. Again, three degrees higher lofted on the Cleveland's. 4.0 versus 2.6 for the side angle. Descent angle, 42.5 versus 39.3 with the PXGs. Apex, 90.1 versus 78.4 with the PXG. So again, much higher up in the air, a little bit higher loft though as well. Uh, flight time as well, 6.0 versus 5.7 seconds with a PXG. So again, higher loft, gonna equal higher flight time, higher descent angle on average. But again, distance wise, also still winning at 178.1 versus 177.7. So I'm still getting further distance as well though, even though it's a higher lofted club with the Cleveland. So let's look at the shot dispersion circle now. Woo, okay, um, yellow for, I'll call it yellow again for Cleveland's. And I guess pink or purple for PXGs, all right? So just bear with me on that. All right, so the lighter color, of course, is gonna be the Cleveland's. Uh, PXGs had a wider dispersion circle, as you see, kind of sprayed across. Now with your dispersion circles, you're gonna to wanna to see something that 
it's okay if, even if you miss left and right per se, but what you're really looking at is where are those balls landing within that dispersion circle. In other words, if you were to have something that spanned say 20 yards, but each of those balls landed in the same distance, then you're just missing your target. You're not missing your distance, right? So what we look at with that dispersion circle is number one, which one is going to be closer in regards to overall total shots. And also we look at which one is closer to that center line as well, which is your target. So on this one, um, I'm going to give the nod to the Clevelands because they're a little bit tighter together and they're also closer to that center line. And to be honest, they were just super, super easy to hit. It took no effort at all. I wasn't trying to overswing. I'm still getting further distance with a higher lofty club. And it just overall, to me, a fun, very, very, very fun club to hit as a mid-handicap golfer. Having that confidence at address is super important and allowing you to be able to take that shot and know what you're gonna be doing with that distance-wise and just know that you have a really, really good chance of hitting a good shot, it makes all the difference in the world when you're lining up that next shot. So to me, it's gonna, let me give that nod to Cleveland in this case, um, but wanted to kind of see your thoughts. Let me know what you think of the numbers and uh, overall between the two. I, I'd like to have a full set of these Clevelands to test on a regular basis and maybe do some course blogs with you. So maybe we can do that down the road. Uh, but overall, this has been one set of clubs I've always wanted to kind of test. I'm glad I got the opportunity to do that for you from a mid-handicap perspective. I'll come right back. We'll finish up this video. I'll give you my final thoughts on what we tested today. All right, so that pretty much sums up today's video. And I had a really, really good time testing out these clubs. I did struggle a bit between the three. The seven iron was the one I struggled with the most just because I was trying to get a better feel uh, with the Clevelands. And it's a little bit different having the larger head and, you know, as compared to something that I'm used to having a little bit smaller head, a little bit of a weight difference in the shaft. But once I started to kind of dial that in, I really kind of locked that one in a bit more. So overall, I mean, as far as the five iron, I was blown away with, the, with how good I was hitting that one. And again, very close to say more of a hybrid, um, but definitely something I enjoyed hitting. I'd like to see and hear your thoughts at home. So let me know in the comments if the Cleveland Launcher XL Halos are going to be something that you would consider putting in your golf bag. And again, remember, mid handicap, high handicap golfers, I think this is something that would be perfect for you to test out. Lower handicap golfers, more than likely, they'll be kind of turned off by the extra width that you're getting with that club. Obviously, they're gonna want something that's a little bit more low profile, but I wouldn't put it past me to try that out as well. The only difference that you may be missing is the feel on miss hits to know where you're missing that golf ball. Uh, but because someone like me who hits it all over the face, I want as much forgiveness as possible. So these could definitely be in my golf bag down the road. I'd like to test out a full set later and see, okay, is this something I would definitely consider? But I like to test them out, you know, at least give it a month or so before I do a final judgment. So just call this an initial impression um, more than a full review, but want to kind of give you guys an idea. So let me know your thoughts. Let me know if you have any questions on anything. Again, anytime, any questions, reach out to me at Roland at mygaragegolf.com. I'm here to answer any and all questions. I really appreciate you guys hanging out with me. I'd like to know if you're a mid to high handicap golfer. Is this a club set that you would consider getting for yourself? That's definitely important. Uh, let me know your thoughts on that. And of course, until the next time we see you, keep on golfing. We'll definitely catch you on the next one and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks again.